This is Smart Poker Study Episode 205, Five Key Concepts for Poker Study Noobs. In last week's episode number 204, I simplified the top 10 Poker HUD stats by giving you the three things you must know about each. It's poker study time, y'all. Thank you so much for tuning in and for telling your friends. I love you and I appreciate all that you do to support the show. And if you're watching this on YouTube, hit that subscribe button down below and ding that bell so you get notified as soon as a new podcast or training video hits the airwaves. October is here. I'm loving this. The weather is great and everything. And I'm also loving all my Patreon supporters. They supported me for another month. October 1st just hit and I appreciate that support. Within the next week or so, I'm going to be putting out the rewards podcast and the reward training video for everybody who is supporting through October. So I appreciate that. Um, If you want to follow along and support on Patreon, just go to Patreon. That's P-A-T r-e-o-n dot com slash smart poker study there are different levels of support and i appreciate everybody who supports and once you do you get access to all the prior patron only content so visit patreon.com slash smart poker study to start that support Alrighty, it's time. Today's episode, it's geared towards helping those of you uh, who are new to taking poker seriously. Yep, you've decided to go beyond poker as a hobby, and you've begun studying and purposefully working on your game. So please visit the show notes page for everything I discussed today, along with screenshots and links, and a special embedded video there to help you study. Uh, Just go to the show notes at smartpokerstudy.com slash pod205. And while you're there, of course, you can sign up for the weekly boost for exclusive poker strategy direct to your inbox. Cool beans, let's roll gambate. Oh, we can handle it. We're professionals. Now look, this is going to get weird, all right? It's it's pretty freaky, but it's safe. There's no reason to be scared. Oh, no, no, daddy don't get scared. Really? Good. So you're one of my listeners because you are intent on improving your poker skills. You want to take this beyond just a hobby. You're basically looking to be better than the competition. So you've started studying and you're uh, gradually adding new skills to your game. Now, there are five critical concepts that you must focus on for every poker study newbie. And even if you've been studying and improving your game for a while, you're no longer a noob. You're a regular kind of player and studier. These five concepts are still going to help you to focus your efforts. Now, the five concepts are, number one, have a goal. Number two, choose one game. Number three, study one skill at a time and put it to use. Number four, have a reason for every play you make. And number five is put yourself in bread and butter spots. So we're going to hit each of these in turn, starting with number one, have a goal. Now, there's got to be a reason that you're taking poker beyond a mere hobby. What is your goal with all this studying and playing that you're doing? Having a goal to pursue is going to make it more likely that you're going to continue pushing yourself for improvement. When you have that goal, you see that finish line up ahead, you're going to do things now that are going to propel you to get there. So maybe you have a goal of making additional income and you think poker is going to be the way to do that. Or maybe your goal is to simply learn a new skill because you're a lifelong learner and you enjoy adding skills to your repertoire. Or maybe you just freaking love poker so much that you want to turn it into a career and you want to go pro someday. Or maybe poker is just a fun pursuit for you, but you realize that it's even more fun when you're winning. So you're studying in order to win more, in order to have more fun. Or maybe you play in home games and you want to crush your friends. So basically, your goal is like bragging rights. Or lastly, maybe it's just a hobby for you to pass the time. But you've decided if you're going to keep playing, if you're going to keep pursuing this hobby of poker, you might as well get better while you're at it. Alrighty, key concept number two, choose one game. Uh, If you're anything like me, you started out playing every single form of No Limit Hold'em. You tried cash games, you tried tournaments, you tried sit and goes, you tested out maybe other variants of poker like Pot Limit Omaha, uh, Omaha 8, or even like Stud, Pineapple, or Raz, all those different games. 
when you vary the games that you play and the formats that you play, you do keep things interesting, right? Lots of new ideas are coming at you and it's just fun bouncing from game to game. But it's really not how you're going to develop your skills the best way possible. You've got to choose one game and one form of poker and just go with it. A lot of the skills that make for successful tournament play, for example, they do also work for cash games and vice versa. But there are some aspects, some strategies to tournaments that have nothing to do with cash games, right? Like great tournament players, they study money bubbles and they study ICM. They learn about how play changes from those early stages to the middle stages where the antis kick in. They also study how to get from three tables to two tables and ultimately how to reach the final table. And they also study final table play and pay jumps in an effort to make more money and get first place. Now, none of those skills are directly applicable to cash games. So if you're trying to play and study both simultaneously, you're shortchanging your poker development. So I recommend that you choose one game and one format and just go with it. For me right now, No Limit Hold'em and Cash Games are my uh, area of study, my, my area of focus right now. Maybe in the future, I'll decide to play Cash Games in a live environment. Maybe I'll even go to tournament play. Maybe I'll just go back to sit and go play like I used to. I don't know what the future holds, but for now, I am dedicating all of my time on and off the felt to improving my Cash Game online no limit hold'em play and i recommend that you choose one game and format for yourself whatever you find most enjoyable also helps because that's gonna help to sustain your skill development journey when the going gets tough if you love the format you're playing you're more likely to continue key concept number three study one skill at a time and put it to use so i've talked about this so many times basically don't allow yourself to be overwhelmed by all the poker content out there. Too many of us allow our studies to jump all over the place. For example, I've done this a hundred times, and I know you have as well. You watch three training videos in one day. You watch one on c-betting, and then one on bet sizing, and then one like playing ace-king offsuit and missing the flop. Now, those are three vastly different strategy topics. So if you watched all three of those videos, what are you going to put into practice in your next play session? Are you actually going to work on your c-bet sizing as the pre-flop raiser holding ace-king offsuit and not hitting the flop? That's, <laughs> woo, that's a pretty specific situation that's not going to come up too frequently in your next session. How about instead you focus on just one of those three things? So the first video you watch it was on a c-bet strategy. That should be where you pull your in-game practice from. And then don't even bother watching those other two videos. Maybe the video creator, uh, maybe they discussed c-betting on flops where there are a lot of turn cards that can add equity to your hand. So in your next session, you look for these opportunities and you act upon them. This is like, for example, this is holding uh, jack of spades, ten of spades on a board of nine, six, deuce with one spade on the board. So... Any spade on the turn gives you a flush draw. An eight or a queen gives your jack 10 and open-ended straight draw. And a jack or a 10 gives you top pair. So when this kind of thing happens, you see bet the flop and then you double barrel on the turn spade, the queen, the jack, the 10, or an eight. You basically have a ton of equity outs there that allow you to double barrel the turn. Now, this is a perfect use of your study and your playtime. You watched one video, you took notes, you pulled out one strategy, and then you put it to use. I guarantee you had more benefit by simplifying your studies this way than that other person who watched three videos in one day and really didn't know what to put to use. So don't overload yourself with poker content. Study one skill at a time and then put one thing to use in your next session. Earlier this week, I released a video called A Poker Study Routine Simplified for Beginners and it gives you a simple four-step process for effective studies. Now, I embedded this YouTube video in the show notes for today, so head on over and check it out. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash smartpokerstudy. They have over 180,000 titles to choose from, and of course, they have my three books, How to Study Poker Volume 1, How to Study Poker Volume 2, and my latest book, Preflop Online Poker. Now, once you sign up for your membership, you get a free audiobook download. Here's what I recommend. 
When you first sign up, get Preflop Online Poker for free because it's a more expensive audiobook. And then you're going to buy How to Study Poker Volume 1. Listen to that first. Learn the good study techniques I teach. Then use those techniques to study Preflop Online Poker. So once again, visit audibletrial.com slash smartpokerstudy to get your free audiobook download and 30-day free trial. And two quick shout-outs today. They go to John Homan and Paul Stulak. Both of these lovely gentlemen purchased Poker Tracker 4 through my affiliate link. They went to smartpokerstudy.com slash poker tracker four with the number four at the end right there and for their valiant efforts in supporting the show i emailed them copies of my smart hud as well as i sent them uh, some video links for videos that are going to help them get more out of poker tracker four and out of the smart hud they realize the benefit of tracking all of your hands having a database of hands that you can study from and learn about your own play and learn about your opponents as well as having a hud to exploit those opponents so once again, thank you very much, John and Paul, for your support. Alrighty, back to class, poker people. Key concept number four, have a reason for every play you make. There are only five options possible at any decision point in poker. You can either check, call, bet, raise, or fold. That is it. And with only five options, you would think that poker would be a very simple game. But as we all know, that's far from accurate. To make the most profitable choice out of those five options, you need to have a reason for every play you make. Let's say you're thinking about making a continuation bet like we talked about before. Well, some players, they automatically see bet 100% of the time. They don't have a reason behind their bet. They're just betting because they were the raiser on the prior street. And betting is just what they do. Now, we know this is not a good enough reason. I'm doing it just because I'm doing it. No, that's that's not a reason at all, actually. A reason would actually be something like, I am C betting for value with my top pair hand because my opponent can call with second or third pair hands. Now, I think that's a valid reason to C bet for sure. Or maybe you're C betting as a bluff because you think something like, I'm betting my ace king here on the 10 high board because my opponent is folding most of the time without a pair. If they decide to call, I still have six outs to an over pair on the turn. Bam! That's another good reason to bet. And this time it's betting as a bluff. Now, for many players new to taking poker seriously, you might not be able to voice the reason for your chosen play. Maybe it just feels right to you without any logic to back up your decision. And that's totally okay. You maybe don't know enough strategy just yet so you can't fully articulate your reasons. When you're in this kind of situation, where a play feels right, go ahead and make the play, but tag the hand, or if you're playing live, take a note so that you can review it off the felt. When you're off the felt, you have more time to work through the situation, and with that additional time, you can come up with the best play option. If the option you chose was the correct play, great! Your instincts, they sent you in the right direction. If your chosen play was incorrect, that's also great. You just learned a little something that you can take with you into the next situation, just like this one. And key concept number five, put yourself in bread and butter spots. So if you don't know what bread and butter is, I highly recommend that you check out episode 187, because in that episode, I discussed it in detail right there. But to get all you poker study newbies on the right path, Bread and butter spots are where most of your poker profits come from in No Limit Hold'em. Bread and butter is where you get to the flop as the pre-flop raiser in position against one or two opponents, but mostly one opponent. Because this is the most profitable spot to be in, winning players try to put themselves in the situation as much as possible. Now, the bread and butter spot, it's actually just one of 24 different ways that you can get to the flop. First, there are four different pre-flop actions that you can take. Number one is you're the pre-flop raiser. Number two, you're the pre-flop caller. Number three, you limp or you open limp. Now, this is technically calling, but it's even weaker than calling a two bet. It's the weakest way to enter a pot. And the fourth way to enter the pot is as the pre-flop big blind player and everyone else limps in and you just check. Next, there are three different numbers of players on the flop. The first is two players on the flop or a heads up game. 
The second way is three players on the flop. And the third way is four players or more. Now those are just big multi-way pots. And finally, there's relative position on the flop. Number one, you can be in position. Or number two, you cannot have position. So if we multiply these out, four times three times two, means that there's 24 different ways to see the flop. And like I said, bread and butter is the most profitable one. So if you're an online player with a database of hands, you can take the time right now and you can go through and filter for all 24 of these spots so that you can see your profits and your win rate in each one. Now, if you have a database of 20,000 hands or more, I guarantee that you're going to find bread and butter spots are the most profitable with the highest win rate for you. The lowest win rate, it's probably going to be like a preflop caller or a limper out of position and multi-way. So your big takeaway here is to actively try to put yourself in bread and butter spots. This means that you're raising more than calling preflop, you're not limping, you look to have post-flop position, and you avoid multi-way pots. Challenge! Here's my challenge to you for this episode. Watch the video that I embedded in the show notes called Poker Study Routine Simplified for Beginners and start conducting your studies this way. You study one thing at a time and put one strategy into action during your next session. You learn one new thing, then you practice it. Repeat this process over and over. This is going to help you achieve your poker goal. Now it's your turn to take action and dippy dippy do something positive for your poker game. Oh, that's it now. Get out there and be somebody. Go out a book. This episode is not complete until you head to the show notes page at www.smartpokerstudy.com slash pod205. Go there for screenshots and links, as well as that embedded video right there to help you get your studies going on the right foot. Thank you so much for listening today. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe and leave a review within your favorite podcatching app. This is the best way, other than direct word of mouth, that you can help the show grow. If you can type or say the word smart poker study, you can find me on Alexa, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and Instagram. If you do have questions, I have answers. Sky at smartpokerstudy.com. Just send me an email. Alrighty, poker peeps, in the next episode number 206, I'm going to give you a three-question Q&A. Word of mouth is the best advertising, so thank you very much for sharing the show with other poker people. Your sharing and caring is what helps us grow. Until next time, study smart, play much, and make your next session the best one yet.